Sometimes being creative is effortless, and sometimes it's the hardest thing in the world. And while I will be the first to admit that my brain often is more creative in chaos and experimentation, there are 11 rather unhinged things that I have started to do to help grease the skis when I need to succeed creatively and make videos as easily as possible. And I promise you guys will be shocked with the last one, you have my word. And so let's dive in to my crazy dorky dad brain. This is the 11 unhinged hacks video. Hack number one. Like all editors, I have an assets folder and I would highly recommend this for anyone, but one of my pride and joys in my assets folder is actually two separate folders. One with cut out faces of myself with different facial expressions and one with cut out bodies from stock photos <laughs> that have the heads cut off so that I can put my head on them and make all of my dorky, stupid Jake graphics. This saves me a ton of time. Every time I want to make a graphic, it's all in one place. It's all organized. And anytime I need a new one, I just throw it in there and I don't have to go searching for them or make them custom every single time. Couldn't recommend this enough. And this would be for any graphics that you're doing for really any sort of work. Hack number two. This one should be fairly obvious. We're using it in this video. I have a mic plugged into an interface with a USB-C cable that hooks into my computer always on my desk. It's never put away. Sorry, we're talking into it. Can't show it. It's never put away. I'm always using it. And again, whether I need to record voiceover, memos, or just record a video like this, having a microphone dedicated to that process and always available is such a hack. Do it now. It just removes friction. Hack number three. I have a tripod set up behind the monitor so that at any point in time, I can just stick my camera back there, hit the red button, hit the red button on my audio and start making a video. Now, of course, I'm me again with that chaos brain. I like to sometimes just put cameras in random places. This is not that normal spot for this video. Sometimes you got to mix it up, but having a place where you can always put something to make a standard video is a great way to go. Hack number four. This one's pretty obvious, but I fought this one for years and years and years due to budget reasons. And now there really is no budget reasons because the best budget cameras, in my opinion, Panasonic cameras now have great autofocus. You want a camera with great autofocus. Even if you just make videos like this, guys, there's no excuse now in 2024. All of the brands have great autofocus. I'm using it right now for this video. Get a camera with good autofocus. It will save you a lot of headache and there's great options out there. The Panasonic S5 II is my current camera. It's my favorite camera I've ever owned. I'm not sure until it literally croaks that I will need to buy another camera because I just I don't know. It does everything I want it to do. <laughs> Hack number five. I use an Apple keyboard, the small one without the number pad. And this sounds crazy. And, you know, I'm going to defend myself here, but I also understand that you guys probably think that I'm an idiot for editing with it. Obviously, there is lag. Obviously, there is latency because this is a Bluetooth keyboard. But as you can see, the reason I love this keyboard it comes off the desk, it floats around, it's super tiny, it's super lightweight, and I am always sticking cameras on my desk. I'm always playing around with different gadgets like the tour box this past couple of weeks where I need to move my keyboard out of the way and shoot shots and shoot B-roll and make videos. And having a big, chunky, mechanical, dedicated keyboard is something I've done in the past. And just personally, when it comes to creative stuff, this is my weapon of choice because it just allows me to be flexible in all of the different facets of what I do. Hack number six is the vertical side monitor. Now I've again, very similar to the keyboards. I've done so many different monitor configurations all the way up to three <laughs> monitor configurations. Um, at one point I even wanted more than three. Nowadays I'm on one single 4k monitor where I do all of my main work again with my just mayhem brain. I need just one focus monitor to do what I need to do. And then currently I'm rocking kind of a side vertical monitor where I can have finder windows, my task list, things that aren't going to distract me like an internet browser. <laughs> or you know, maybe notes could be on there, just things like that, that allow me to keep editing, keep recording, keep writing, but also make certain things that need to be accessible, like my assets or footage without having a whole nother 
monitor that kind of feels like my head can go back and forth. It's just one main monitor and a sidekick. And I love this setup. I've been using it for a few months now and I think it's sticking. I think it's sticking for creative work. Hack number seven, script your entire videos. Now, ironically enough, I mostly am working off of an outline for this video, which means it's got about a 50% chance of you guys seeing it. <laughs> We'll see. I don't know. I'm feeling feeling like I'm flowing good in this one. So we'll see how it goes. Scripting has changed the game for me. Any big video, any big project, any idea that I have, I always sit down with pages and I write it out first. My most recent big project that was like hours and hours of work was the Furiosa re-edit video. And I kid you guys not, I literally scripted out that entire video, recorded the voiceover and made the entire video all the way up to the actual editing of the trailer. I didn't even know if my edit of the trailer was going to be anything I wanted to post or like, and I did that all ahead of time. And it's kind of the new way that I'm working. I just find personally, and I think some people think that it really takes the creativity out of the process. I was one of those people. I fought this one for so long, but sitting down, trying to write out a story, trying to write in general and predict everything that's going to happen has changed my ability to make videos. It makes me A, enjoy it so much more because it gives me a North Star through the whole process. And then B, as soon as I hit a speed bump, a tangent, a side, whatever, it's like, oh yeah, you know, maybe I didn't predict this in the script, but this is good storytelling. Let's add this to the video. And then you add it. It's not hard to add stuff in. Like it doesn't have to be concrete gold set in stone when you write a script, but it helps me immensely. If that's something you're struggling with, if you're struggling <laughs> to make videos, I would highly recommend pull out pages, pull out word. Don't use Google docs. I have really found that working in a browser, it's so easy to get distracted. You have all your other tabs, pull up a doc that's on, you know, on a client, computer application and write your scripts. You will thank me. Hack number eight, make sure that whatever computer you are using has a USB-C cable or some kind of cable to hook into your camera. Both my Panasonic S5 II and my Panasonic S5 have USB-C Type-C plug-in capability where if I have a USB-C cable that's in my dock, I can literally just hook it into the camera and start to dump footage. It sounds small, but opening up the little door, clicking out little SD cards, almost breaking them every time, giving them wear and tear, just takes more time. It adds friction. Just get a USB-C cable, open up one flap, plug it in, dump your stuff, eject it. It's such a small little thing, but holy crap, does it make me enjoy the footage dumping process so much more because it just feels cleaner, safer, more efficient. Definitely do this. It sounds so dumb, but I seriously swear by this one. Hack number nine, whenever you download a sound effect from a website like Epidemic or, you know, one of the free websites, whatever the case may be, wherever you're getting your sound effects from, I have personally found lately that renaming those sound effects to something that my brain can search for in the future is a huge time saver. So whenever I download them, I go look at whatever they would have called them and rename those sound effects so that they have words, keywords, maybe a bunch of different keywords words for things that I can search for, whether I'm working in DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro. It just makes finding sound effects so much easier. And again, it's your brain that did it. Your brain knows your brain the best. So whenever you start to kind of rename these sound effects, it sticks with what you remember it. So I've been doing that. It's been a huge time saver and it's making my sound design so much quicker and just more enjoyable in the back end. <laughs> Hack number 10. We talked about this microphone. We're going to talk about it again. When I am recording audio and logic, everything is pre-configured and saved so that when I do anything, all of the audio processing that goes through this microphone is set up and ready to go every single time. I have a project opened up. I just duplicate the tracks, all of the mastering, all of the mixing and everything is dialed exactly how I love to hear it. And I've gotten compliments from you guys. And every time I'm using the same settings, I'm not doing that every time I sit down to record audio. And I would say definitely do this. However, you're recording audio, if it's in Resolve, Final Cut, Logic, make sure your audio sounds how you want it to sound and make it repeatable. Alrighty guys, and we are on to hack number 11. Now this is the one that I said would like just send you guys off the wall and I'm gonna get flacked for, flamed for. Everyone is going to make fun of me. That's fine because honestly, it's something that I just think that more people could talk about. I shoot all of my video in 8-bit 
HD log. Now, for those of you who don't know what that means, not a big deal for those of you that do. I can already see your fingers going nuts wanting to flame me. And again, here's why. I'm in a controlled environment. I've learned lighting. I know what I'm doing. I'm using Panasonic cameras where with my monitoring LUTs, I can see exactly on the screen what I am going to get. And so when I get into post and add my LUT, I get exactly what I was previewing here. I'm not pushing this footage hard. Everything I try to get in camera to the best of my ability. And that's why I just use HD log 8-bit footage and it works great. Um, why HD over 4K? For some reason in my brain, if I have five hours of ability to record on a card, I just shoot more, which I always thank myself in the editing process that I have so much more footage to work with. Whereas if I shoot 4K, I just feel like I'm going to run out of space and I don't film as much. But if I have literal hours of room to film, I film more. And again, Funny enough, I bet none of you even noticed because YouTube compresses the crap out of everything. You probably thought I was shooting in 4K and, well, I wasn't. But guys, that is everything I have for my unhinged creative hacks. What do you guys do? Tell me what you do to speed up your process to make it more enjoyable. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are enjoying this content. If you are a dorky daddy, consider subscribing. And if you are the nerdiest of the nerds, we love you. There is a membership option down there, guys. Membership people get one video every Monday. We call it Membership Monday, where I go into some deep topic about editing or workflow or something like that, where, you know, the algorithm just probably would struggle with it, but like you guys want the deepest information. So thank you to our members who are already supporting the channel. You guys are the best. And with that, guys, I'm going to let you go because I need to get back to editing. See you guys. Later.